is, it is, it is showtime, everybody. Welcome to an all new Downright Sports here on YouTube. Subscribe at the bottom, please. I am your host, Brent Reed, the notorious sports critic for the sports fan. And we are back. It's been about two, three weeks since we've been doing anything on YouTube. And we're returning. And we're going to have another last episode with thought-provoking and tough and hard-hitting. Well, this one is going to be one of the same. So, strap in for another episode where we take it there. Uh, today, we will talk about the anniversary of Title IX, and we're also going to touch on some of the topics of this week. Well, how do we do that? We do it with the Must Know News. And my favorite, finally, baseball is back. Well, we'll be coming back. Baseball uh, the players have told the owners, just tell us when, and we're going to show up. Uh, after weeks and months of negotiations and uh, coming up with ideas, it looks like, well, they're going to be a 60-game season. that will kick off July 26th. Uh, spring training will resume July 1st, uh, and there will be a 30-man roster up until the first two weeks to kind of give everybody, because pitchers are going to be the ones that's going to have to probably take longer to get ready. So we're going to have a 30-man roster to kick out. Another thing, finally baseball has got what they wanted, DH in both leagues. So for the first time in the history of baseball, there will be a DH in the National League. The DH was created in about 1972, if I'm not mistaken. I want to say that's correct. <laughs> the DH was created in 1972, uh, coming to baseball, and they National League never adopted it. It was an American League thing. Before um, 1996, there were always two different leagues with two different uh, two different league presidents. We're looking like we're coming to one type of baseball league, um, uh, coming ahead to everybody. I'm trying to find out what's up. Moving on, uh, there will also be an extra innings by sec automatic uh, runner placed at second base. That's going to be different. This is to try to speed up the game. I don't care what baseball thinks, but this won't speed up the game. This is not going to help the game go any faster because to get to extra innings, you still got to play nine. And those nine can be very long. So the idea behind it is when you got a guy at second, you can just bump him over and then the game. This rule will not take place in the playoffs, though. It will go back to the regular standard uh, baseball rules. And then moving on to Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace has created some change. 1973, by the way, guys, a little correction on my part, 1973. But it's uh, close. Anyway, Bubba Wallace, NASCAR, black NASCAR driver, uh, this past week looked like there was more controversy. A week ago, he got NASCAR to remove the Confederate flag from all its races step in the right direction. Well, a noose was found in Bubba Wallace's uh, garage. Everybody thought it was speculation, that it was it was hatred, and somebody was trying to send a message to him. Well, the FBI found out that this noose or this rope was already in the garage as since October. So the good news is nobody was actually trying to threaten Bubba or intimidate him. Hopefully, which a lot of people I think have started drawing directions, started drawing uh, lines that it could be like a Jesse Smollett. I don't think we're going to get there. I don't feel like we're heading there. I just think it just happened to be wrong place at the wrong time. And Bubba Wallace is trying to do something for NASCAR that they haven't been able to do for themselves, and that's make the sport global and integrate the sport and bring in people who may actually have liked the sport but maybe too scared to attend the race. Maybe they didn't want to attend the race, and it's no secret NASCAR for years has been notoriously known for being uh, predominantly white. Now, here's the crazy part. A lot of people love racing. Some of, if you watch some of the most popular movies have racing in them, and guess what? A lot of the actors in those movies happen to be black guys. So maybe we're going to start seeing more and more of influxes of black people. We didn't see it in golf for Tiger Woods, but golf is expensive. People will pay for a new car. And then finally, the NBA has the first player that is going to opt out. Avery Bradley will opt out and not participate in this part two of the NBA when it resumes July 30th. Bradley says he wants to stay home to be with his family. The question is, should players 
be required to play if you're under contract. Here's my point. I have an actual real job. I can't tell them I don't want to play because of Black Lives Matter. I can't go to my job and say, hey, I don't want to show up to work because of Black Lives Matter or because I'm scared of Corona. I don't have that privilege. I'm told to show up. If not, I'm fired. So I understand players. I understand they're trying to make a statement. It, it sounds like, to me, it sounds a little weird. It sounds, like, it's, it sounds fishy. If this was going on in November, December, January, February, around All-Star Weekend, would these guys be trying to opt out? Or because it's the summertime, this is normally when guys take vacations, now they want to kind of opt out. I'm not saying. I'm just asking. Anyway, when we return, we're going to discuss Title IX in Segment 2 for the topic of this show today. And this is Downright Sports. Check it out. Welcome back, everybody, even though you don't really go anywhere. Uh, June 23rd, just a few days ago, was the anniversary of Title IX when it went into place. Title IX was basically put into law so nobody of uh, uh, gender, sex, etc. could be excluded from any uh, sport out there, If the basically from public schools. So if you're a school that gets federal funding, you can't say girls can't do it. Heck, you also can't say, surprisingly as I read through it, you can't say if you're uh, gay or part of the LBGTQ community, you're also excluded from said sport. Hmm. So, this was done in 1972. <laughs> Almost about 50-something years ago. Getting there, if not quite. The million dollar question, to everybody's mind, is have we seen improvement since it? Have we seen progress? That's the key word. Anytime a law is put in place, you always look for progress. You always look for growth. We have we have professional women's leagues across the world, whether it's in soccer, basketball, professional women's softball, professional women's hockey, uh, women in NASCAR, which we've had plenty of women in IndyCar racing, um, uh, women wrestling, name it. We've seen a, a women's golf. We've seen a, a growth in a lot of these things, but we haven't seen the influx of money because they still haven't reached that popularity status. Even though Women's World Cup is more pop, uh, Women's American team is way more popular than the men's national team. I can promise you, if you go out in the street, big sports fan, they can name more women's soccer players than they can men professional uh, soccer players from the Team USA teams, mainly because the male Team USA is trash. But the has is it time now to open it up a little bit more? Should we start seeing women play baseball, which they could probably do? Baseball is one of those sports where it's no contact, so you don't really have to worry about somebody being stronger than the other. Heck, in basketball, you could probably start seeing women cross over to basketball, especially from positions like point guard, positions like shooting guard. Uh, heck, even uh, I could honestly see uh, someone like Maya Moore play on in the NBA and, p and keep her own. She may not score twenty points a game, but potentially she could score around fourteen. If she could shoot. Heck, Dan and Tarazi could probably average around twelve to fifteen assists in the NBA, maybe. But the whole idea is not just to help women play; it's also to see people of different backgrounds. So, for example, right now in baseball, basketball, football, and hockey, there are no openly gay athletes currently participating. Openly. Now, we've seen uh, guys who have played, who since retired or been released, come out. But we have not seen any currently, like, number one draft picks or anybody come and say, hey, I'm gay. Oh, Michael Sands, but he got drafted in the seventh round and got cut later. But we don't have anybody open. Should there be more progress? Should leagues be openly pursuing more gay athletes? In women's sports, there are openly gay athletes everywhere with no issues. But in the men's sports, they're not pursuing it. And I think it's time for the men's sports to start paying more attention to Title IX and start erasing some of these stigmas of the gay stereotype, the old school. If there's a gay man in the locker room, he's going to attack me. I find that hard to believe. <laughs> uh, uh, 
yay men are no different than anybody else where they're attracted to who they're attracted to and that's going to be it so rah so rah if you're not yay you have nothing to worry about there's not some special gay potion out there that they'll sprinkle all over top of you and then all of a sudden now you're just into him i don't think it works that way so should just like in football where they have the rooney rule where they're looking to get more minority coaches which they have failed at should now professional male sports implement rules to help if you're a, a gay a closeted gay athlete afraid to come out should they make it more opening i think so baseball could be the start baseball was the start to accept black players and heck i think it's time if you if you look at it especially with um especially with june being pride month baseball could easily direct June as Pride Month in baseball and welcome and open a lot of people in that community. I know for a fact the old, growing at the, around the age I am in, there was always a stigma that gay people don't watch sports. Well, that's completely wrong. Someone I know very personally is a huge Clemson fan and is also in love with a guy. Guess what? The conversation hasn't changed when we talk about who's better, Clemson or Alabama. No, it hasn't. He talks about it just like anybody else that you guys would be, you would, and you wouldn't even be shocked. You you wouldn't even be impressed because he's a diehard Clemson fan. It's kind of sickening sometimes. But <laughs> I think it's time for Title IX to be explored even more. Open it up, and now so people, because the idea was to let people feel comfortable. The number of women who once Title IX went in a place, the number of women who went from playing was like one to five to like two to, to, to the numbers went to like. Two to, every, to, two to every five women started playing, which is great. If the day comes to have a daughter, I'd be happy for Title IX because I know she'll be able to play a sport that she wants to if she chooses to play the sport. Now, where back to women's sports, where's the future go for them? I've always said women need better sponsorships and women need somebody out there to represent them, like the WNBA. The WNBA has been around for, for over 20 years and still has not struck the, mark, the, the, the culture the way it needs to. Why is that? Because they don't have that star. They don't have that whole Kogan. They don't have that Michael Jordan. Or the league is not putting these people out there. They need to have these figures everywhere. They need to have their faces everywhere. Women's sports can be just as, can be just as entertaining as men's sports. But they need the right sponsorships. They need the right push. They need the right... <clears throat> I think during this corona epidemic, we've been a perfect opportunity to highlight so many women's sports. And in fact, ESPN chose to go the opposite way but start airing old games. They would air old men's games, but this could have been the chance for ESPN and others to air a lot of women's games, air great tennis matches from the past, air great WNBA games, air great soccer games, whatever. They could have done it, but there's still going to be work to be done. And even though 1972 doesn't seem that long ago, it was. And there's still time to create and make it one day where women in any sport can get paid as much as men in their sport. We all know everything is revenue driven, so hopefully one day when we can improve the, the popularity of some women's sports will get so much bigger that the revenue will draw them to that. And I hope to see that one day. So, anyway. Thank you all for watching. It's been cool. Next week, this is the last, I gotta look at my board, but I'm pretty sure this is the last downright sports like this, where there'll be a kind of a topic and we're gonna touch on it. I had a picture of my calendar and I was like, oh, here, this is picture here. So, next week will be the last week and we're gonna talk about the future of sports. That's next week's topic where we're going fans no fans digital what's happening of course because corona we don't know but we're going to talk about that next week and then after that starting in july 8th downright sports is going all baseball all the time until the end of the baseball season is over and we're going to talk baseball something a little different try it out anyway uh subscribe at the bottom hit me up at twitter hit me up at instagram also, check out DJ Chase's latest projects right now. His most recent, uh, his biggest hit right now, uh, 
Sorry, gotta pull them out. His biggest hit right now, uh, A Birthday in Toronto. Download that anywhere music is downloaded. Uh, check out uh, his podcast right now, The Party Mix. You can, hit, you can check that out uh, on any plat- uh, podcast platform. Speaking of podcasts, check out the Downright Sports Radio podcast at Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Google Play. You can listen to new episodes air every Sunday, but luckily you can listen anytime. And uh, the music today by D1, the only Uncle Buddha. We much appreciate that. Check out his SoundCloud, if you will. Uh, And we'll see you guys next week. Deuces.